How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech Extra and also a two-man unboxing video off of the ASUS ROG Strix Z790E Wi-Fi. Now I have actually already done a few Z790 boards so if you want to see any of those there will be linked in the description either on this channel or on the main channel We Do Tech so there's plenty of options for you guys there but for now this is only going to be an unboxing video and then later on on the main channel I'm actually going to do the full review with benchmarks and going over temperatures and stuff like that all right so with all of that out of the way let's quickly get into the unboxing and uh, see what we get in a side now unfortunately i did see that uh, i think the courier or somebody stick stickers on the box here so we have some residue here that's a bit sticky but this is just a review sample it's nothing to keep or anything like that so that's entirely fine uh you can probably clean that up if, if I wanted to, I'll probably do that later on. But uh, anyway, let's quickly open up and see. Firstly, we do have our Wi-Fi <laughs> antenna in here. So of course, this is the Wi-Fi edition. So you do have that there, which will go over underneath the motherboard here. Let's put that to the side. We have our little lanyard here. We have our welcome card. We have some stickers. So if you're into stickers, you do have that. Just don't stick it on the box here. Oh, our, okay. So we do have our CPU right here. So they neatly uh, put it there. Just put that to the side. Uh, we do have our manual, which is always handy for your motherboard. Just to make sure about everything. But luckily, you can download that as well. Underneath here, we do have our little support bracket for it looks like a cooling fan which i'll just take a look at but it's a tiny probably what 80 or 90 millimeter fan for your vrms that's actually pretty cool so i haven't seen that on any other board really so that's pretty nice i'll go over that later on you have two sata three cables you have the additional bracket for the fan there. You have your Q latch attachment there. You have, this is your GPU support bracket, which is also quite nice. Getting a lot of extra stuff here. So you do have a rubber button pad here. I'm not exactly sure where that goes. Haven't seen that on any of the other boards that are unboxed yet. Some additional rubber pads there, some additional rubber pads there, some thermal pad here for your M.2s, another Q latch, and then also finally some tiny zip ties, which is handy. There for now, and now I can get into the board itself. And again, I'm pretty curious to see where the fan actually goes for our VRMs here. First time that I'm seeing that. So get that out of the way there we go and here we have it now this is actually a bit of a different design compared to the other e-boards that i have actually taken a look at because i have done a few of the uh, rog streaks z90 and z70 e-boards there's so many over the couple of years that i've actually done this stuff so it actually looks a bit different, more different compared to some uh, other new versions of boards. So I do quite like that. Now, just before we get into the rest of the board, let's quickly talk about the pricing because it does look like the board is retailing for $500, which is slightly bit more uh, compared to the Z690E when that released, and that was $480. I do still have my video up on that one, so you can check that out if you wanted to. And for here in South Africa, it's retailing for around 12,000 rand. So again, it's up there, but it's already strict sport and it's going to have everything that you would really need now i am going to pair it up with the i7 13700k so i think that's going to be a perfect combination between price and performance uh, but of course you can also pair it up with an i9 i have done my review of the i9 13900k as well and uh, i don't think it's going to be a problem with these boards speaking about the i7 that one is retailing for around 440 dollars or around 10,000 rand so again 
pretty expensive combo going to be uh, but if that is a bit uh, too much for you you do also have the option of always going for the i5 13 600k paired up with the asus prime z790 a board for around a 600 dollars or 14,000 rand for the entire combo i have actually already done a video for that one so it's perfect for that i will leave a link in the video description i did all of my benchmarks the unboxings everything so definitely check that out if you are in a bit more of a budget but if cost isn't necessarily that big of an issue for you then this is definitely going to be uh, more up your alley especially if you can want to go for the i9 <laughs> so you do have a few options that you can go for now as for the design of the board i have to i i do like it quite a bit it's full black like majority of the rog board but i believe you do have a white versions as well not necessarily for the e but i believe you have for the a so uh for the design uh the first thing that i know is, is the cover here over your uh, io heat spreader here for your vrms uh, I'm not sure if you can probably remove this if you wanted to. So um, it's, uh, it's possibly just like a protective cover. Otherwise, you can leave it on most likely. But it does cover your RGBI here. So we'll see how that looks. But it does look quite interesting. You have a massive VRM heat sprayers here. So that's going to help out with your cooling. Down here, you have your, uh, your M.2 heat sprayers all along everything here. Along with your RGB chipset heat sprayer as well. So that's a pretty interesting. And everything else does have some cover as well. So looks pretty cool. On the back here, you have just a nice looking design on the back. No uh, really anything armory going on here like some of the other boards so you do have support brackets there now just before we continue with the race i'm curious to find out if you guys are planning to upgrade to the new z790 uh, 13th generation uh, platform or are you sticking with your current setup or are you planning to move somewhere else i'm cu pretty curious to hear what everybody's planning to do with all of the different hardware being released uh these last couple of months so uh, let me know down in the comments below now with all of that out of the way let's get into the cpu because the, of course this is the lga 1700 socket it's the same one that we we had on the z690 platform uh, and also the 12th generation intel cpu so you do have the option of mixing these up you can use a 12th generation cpu like the 12700k or you can use the 13700k on the z690 board so you do have plenty of options to choose from uh, there but for this video there's going to be no uh, benchmarks unfortunately those ones will come out on uh, the main video again i'll link in the video description now as for our vrms you do have a 18 plus one phase digital vrm uh, setup here and i believe it is 90 amps as well so there's plenty enough uh, for majority of cpus and i believe even going to be for the 3900k uh, just make sure about your cooling then because that cpu does run quite 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 hot not necessarily for the vrms but just for the cpu in general but now for these temps with the 3700k we'll see actually how the vrm attempts perform again on the main review now moving on to our memory we do have a four dual channel ddr5 dim slots that has supports a maximum of 128 gigs 13 gigs per dim and then it's a fully button A bird just flew into the house. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll sort that out later. <laughs> All right, uh, where was I now? Now, as for speeds, it is rated up to 7,800 megahertz plus. So you can go higher than that if you really want to do some uh, crazy overclocking. But 7,800 megahertz is plenty. And along with that, Kingston did send over their new Fury Renegade memory, which is quite a bit of fast. So these ones, I believe, run at 6,800 megahertz. So we'll use these ones in our full review. And I believe these ones are so new that they're not even on uh, Kingston's website yet. They go up to 6,400, but these ones aren't available there yet. Now, of course, you do have uh, some DDR4 options for the ASUS boards as well. Uh, I believe there's the A version of the Strix boards, and then also some of the Tough and some of the Prime boards. So you do have options if you want to go that route, but for most majority of the high-end systems, uh, they're only DDR5. But again, you do have your options there depending on your price range. 
If you want to see more motherboard videos like this, subscribe to the channel because I do have a couple of more to come along with more even on the main channel. So subscribe on that one as well. Everything will be linked in the video description. Now moving on to our PCI Express slots here, you do have three full size PCI Express slots with the top one being a PCI Express Gen 5 and the other two Gen 4. The top slot is also running at full 16x speed, whereas the bottom two are only 4x speed for some additional add-on cards. Also, the top slot does feature a Susus armor design, which does help prevent the board from bending when installing some of these massive <laughs> RTX 40 series cards. So uh, that's definitely going to help out with that. I'm also really happy to see that you do have your Q release button here, which just makes releasing your GPU when inside a system that much simpler. So just how it works is uh, you, it locks in place and then all you need to do is press this button and it opens up like that. I do also like the new version of these, whereas the previous one, it just opened it up and it stayed in place where you need to push it back. Whereas these ones actually pulls it to the side, kind of like that, where you need to kind of push it back there. Whereas these ones just slide to the side and that's pretty much that. The quick release button also makes it quite a bit easier if you have a massive GPU along with our heat spirit here for our M.2s. So now speaking about our M.2s, you do have a five M.2s here, which is pretty crazy. So you have your top slot and then also four down here. One there, one there, one there, and also one there. Now the top slot is a PCI Express Gen 5, so you do have all of your speed there. If once we actually have Generation 5 M.2s available, uh, you'll be able to use that there and get crazy, crazy speeds, which probably won't be needed for majority of us. So, but if you want to go all out, you do have the option there. But the other four are PCI Express Gen 4, which is still going up to what over 7,000 megabytes a second. So that's plenty of speeds and you can rate them as well. Also here on the side, you do have a four 90 degree SATA three ports. And I'm also happy to see that all five of the M.2s here does feature a SUSE's Q latch design, which again just makes installing your M.2s and uninstalling them, re re releasing them, uh, that's much simpler. Especially again, when it's actually installed in your system, we don't need to fiddle around with the tiny screws and potentially drop that into your GPU, especially with the GPUs now having the, uh, the open slot on the back of the card there for the air to pass through. So hopefully your small screw doesn't fall into that. Now, if you do have any idea of a product you would like me to feature on the channel here, you know, either review, comparison, benchmark, whatever, just tag me and the brand in a tweet and I'll see if I can get that arranged for you. Now then, I'm moving on to IO here on the side. You do have a plenty here. So you do have your DisplayPort version 1.4, HMI 2.1. You have your clear CMOS button, your bias flashback button, four USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A ports here in blue. You have seven USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, one of them being a Type C, those are 10 gigabits. And then also you do have your BIOS USB here as well for your BIOS flashback. You do have your single USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2, 20 gigabits a second Type C port as well. You do have your 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. I would have liked if that was actually 10 gigabits, but that's okay. But you do have your Wi-Fi 6E here as well, along with Bluetooth 5.3, I believe. Uh, the birds going crazy there. And of course, just your standard audio jacks here. Now, unfortunately, there's no Thunderbolt port on the back IO. I do like that because I actually do have Thunderbolt devices. So that's unfortunate, uh, but you do have your onboard Thunderbolt connectors. So if I actually want to use my Thunderbolt, I'll just need to have a Thunderbolt adapter for that. But uh, speaking for the rest of uh, the onboard connections, you do have your dual 8-pin CPU power connectors up there. You do have your QLED codes up here. You have your start a button here as a well. You do have your Q code up there as a well, along with your alternative Alternative a PCI Express a mode switch, but I'm not exactly sure what that does as of yet. It's auto and then red, so maybe that's for max power overclocking or something. I'll I'll check. I'll see what that does actually in the full review. You do also, of course, have your two USB 2 headers. You do, of course, have your USB 3.2 Gen 2 type C header that does actually support a power delivery of 30 watts. So if your case does support that, you can uh, 
charge your mobile device a lot quicker so that's pretty nice you do have your usb 3.2 gen one hitter here as well i almost missed this on the side here you do also have another usb 3.2 gen one type a hitter here as well then of course you do also have your thunderbolt 4 hitter or usb 4 as well so you do have that option then as for rgb you do have a three uh, 5 volts addressable RGB hitters, two down here, one at the top there, along with your five of, along with your 12 volts RGB header as well there. And then finally, for your PWM fan headers, you do have eight of those all around the board here, along with two here at, uh, at the CPU as well. I'm not usually a big fan of those. Uh, I think they're usually a bit more in the way almost, but uh, you do have it there as well. So that's pretty much it for my unboxing video of the ASUS RG Strix Z790E Wi-Fi. Uh, now again, the full review is coming on, uh, out on the, the main channel for all of the benchmarks, all of the specs and everything else. So if you guys want to check that out, again, linked in the video description. And of course, we're going to pair it up with the i7-13700K. Now, so far, I do actually quite like the board. You get pretty much everything that you would really need. 18 plus 1 phase VRM setup. That's going to be plenty enough even for the i for the i7 even for the i9 you do have a plenty of m.2s here so that's not going to be a problem and then also your uh, memory can go up to 7800 megahertz plenty enough for that and also the io does look uh, quite good as well plenty of usbs so i'm happy about that i actually do use quite a bit of them so that is a very big plus for me you do have your q release button here your q latch designs as well for your m.2 so Nothing really to complain about, probably just the price point, which is a bit high. But if you're going for an ROG board, you already know you are paying for quality. So you just have to live with that. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. A big shout out to ASUS South Africa sending the board over for our unboxing and also the full review. Again, link in the description. Now, if you want to get the board for yourself, I will leave links in the video description. That'll take you to the website. Then depending on which country you are, there'll be a different options are there, which you can check out. Hopefully, I can get a majority of you guys for that. But now that's pretty much it. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, say subscribe and comment like always. I'll check all of you guys next time. Cheers, guys.